What's up guys? It's Izzy from the Dead Air Dudes and today we have for you something a little different that we did previously on another, with another book. Today I'm going to give you the comparisons or basically a verses of The Crow, the book. By James O'Barr and the movie of the same name starring Brandon. Lee, of course, directed by Alex Proyas. And here we go. Basically, you have the story of a guy, Eric Draven, who has a girlfriend, Shelly. And they were unceremoniously and violently murdered. Okay? The way the book tells it is that Eric being a mechanic is driving you know down the road and in not a great part of town in you know in detroit car breaks down along comes people to help but then i really try to help a group of thugs and they stop eric's like you know what don't do this this and that da, 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 da. it escalates he's killed She's beaten, raped, and eventually cured, killed as well. In the movie, a little different, same character, Eric and Shelly, they live in a loft in a bad part of Detroit. They get essentially home invaded, same thugs, beaten, Eric is killed. Spoilers, obviously, you, you guys must have seen this movie already as he's killed and thrown out of a window while she is still alive beaten raped and eventually killed as well now and uh basically the way this is this story goes is that it was written by james obar when he was going through a rough time that his fiance in 1981 was killed by a drunk driver okay and after her death, he really went to a tailspin. And this eventually was a cathartic way to deal with her death, essentially. In which, working a full-time job, he would get home and draw approximately anywhere between 10 to 20 pages a night. And it took him approximately almost nine years to actually complete the book. You know, graphic novel, whatever you want to call it. And for years, he kept it on the shelf and, you know, until he had a, a good friend of his who owned a couple comic shops and said, you know, do you have anything? You know, because oh, I have this book, whatever. Got the book, loved the book. And eventually that created indirectly Caliber Comics, in which The Crow was obviously one of its best sellers to this day, you know. And made James O'Barr a household name, which in turn got the notice of the Hollywood executives to make the movie in what year? The W was 94. Also, it was the story was also further inspired by a story he had read in a Detroit newspaper about a young couple who was killed over a $20 engagement ring. You know? So, yeah. Funny thing about when they were gonna make the movie, originally the studio wanted Michael Jackson to play Eric Draven and for it to be a musical. James O'Barr thought this was a joke and found it funny that the studio and eventually, I explored as a director and Brandon Lee were so enamored with the project that they were like, no, no, no. If we're gonna make the movie, we'll make the movie correctly, like the source material, or we're not making it at all. Thank goodness for that. You know, imagine that. A musical. Jesus. All right. Another thing, another fun fact was that the music was, I'm sorry, the music of Joy Division greatly influenced the production of this book. You listen to The Cure, Joy Division, a bunch of other, you know, another type, other type of music at the time to for James O'Barr to really get into the mood and really help him along in creation of this masterpiece. The Crow himself 
in the book is an amalgam of, geez, I had this written down somewhere, of Iggy Pop, body-wise, and Peter Murphy, face-wise, which originally, James Zappar wanted Iggy Pop to play, you know, he couldn't do it, you know, musical, you know, uh, he couldn't do it, you know, which he did star in a sequel, you know, which shall not be named because those sequels are pretty pretty bad okay now let's get into the book itself and then we'll move on to the movie and comparisons and you know so on and so forth all right the book is a lot more violent than the movie even though the body count in the movie is at 31 approximately and there's a lot of death a lot of violence it's still so much darker so much more um visceral in the book than is in the movie of course you can't really show everything you see in the book in the movie a lot of things don't play well in the book that play well in the book won't play well on screen you can always imagine something worse or something better than you imagine than what is shown to you on the silver screen it's no knock against the movie it's just what it is you know in the book, you can you can see the pain in all the panels of Eric Draven. You feel the hurt, the despair, the anger, the anguish, the hurt. Like I said, that that, that he feels for losing Shelley. It's panel upon panel, which he poured, you know, Mr. Obar poured his heart and soul into those pages, and you could tell they're chock full of, you know, action as well as just a. A, a static a static image can tell a thousand things you know and it's just you know read it you need to freaking read it several times and if you can get the special edition it's even better because it has 30 plus extra pages of scenes and flashbacks and you know things that aren't in the original you know graphic novel okay um, the book is obviously a lot more wordy, while the crow himself, Eric Draven, he's more poetic in what he says, while in the movie, he's more, to a to degree, more to the point, he doesn't talk as much, understandable, let me change, um, the thugs in the book, you know, part of many of the real pieces of shit, there's no redeeming quality for any of them in the book. Not to say there is much in the movie, but we'll get to, we'll get to that a little bit later. And you know, all right, Officer Albrecht is a young cop in the book. In the movie, he's played by Ernie Hudson. You also have a character named Officer, jeez, Captain Cook, I do believe. Do we? Yeah, do we? Believe Captain Cook, and um, he uh. Jeez, I have to look at him. Yeah, Captain Cook, I'm sorry. Captain Cook, he's a combination of both. You know, Ernie Hudson Albright is a combination of Captain Cook and Officer Albright in the in the comics. Or in the comic, for that matter. So another big change, or another thing about the book is that you have the thugs are Tintin, Fun Boy, Top Dollar, Skank, Tom Tom, Shelby. And Gideon, who owns the pawn shop, which you see the, the big pawn shop scene and where he goes and gets the ring and blows it all. All you smell gasoline and the whole, you know, that whole scene in the movie, which is almost verbatim in the book. It's it's freaking awesome. Especially when he stabs with the knife. Great scene, great scene. And the biggest change, or one of the bigger one of the bigger changes is in the book, T Bird is the lead. Is the head uh, is the head honcho of the group, while in the movie T Bird is merely, you know, the leader of the thugs or just you know, and Top Dollar is the criminal mastermind behind everything, while Top Dollar is a smaller character in the book. So a lot of the a lot of the kills are different, like I was saying before, in the book and the movie. So, you know, 
And basically, basically the bottom of the book is haunting, it's beautiful, it's violent, it's visceral, like I said. It's something that needs to be seen, needs to be read, and need to really appreciate the beauty. So, pick it up. Now, the movie, directed by Alex Proyas, starring the late, great Brandon Lee. Very good movie. Watching it again before this review led me to think that um, it's not a great movie. It has some great parts, but the movie in itself is not great. Okay, it has flaws, especially at the third act, at the ending act, or the last act, where it becomes super Hollywood. Excuse me. Becomes super Hollywood, and yeah. So, so let's get to it. It's beautifully shot and well directed by Proyas. Now, we all know that Brandon died on set. A lot of scenes had to be, you know, CGI'd and they had to use stunt doubles or body doubles for the remainder to finish up the filming. Because I do believe the cut was what? Just over 80 minutes, 85 minutes or something. So they had to, you know, the movie was basically done, but they needed to finish it up. So a lot of the scenes, they actually created a mask similar to Brandon Lee's face so that when the body doubles needed to you, needed to be Brandon Lee, it would look just like, you know, Brandon Lee. The beginning scene where, you, where, you, where he comes into the, into the apartment, into the loft after rising from the grave, oh, that's not Brandon Lee. You know, at least have that part coming in. It was digit. It was a body double, and then also when he's killed and thrown out of the window, they CGI Brandon's face to a stunt double, and everything is CGI. Also, a couple of other scenes, whatever that were body doubles when uh, when the kid, um, Sarah, who's Sherry in the book. That's another. That's another big big difference. But with Sherry in the book, um, when she goes into the loft and taught you know and said and calls out for Eric and you see him in the distance it's not him it's a body double okay and a lot of the voiceovers were also not Brandon Lee it was they had uh two or three different actors to combine and make the voiceovers so all right obviously the kid like I said before the kills are different than in the book to the movie they're not as exploitive or graphic but still they work very well like i said before top dollar is the leader when t-bird was the leader in the books top dollar is more like a kingpin type character like a criminal he's head of the criminal underworld in detroit or you know whatever you know the movie is based upon and so it's gives it a different vibe t-bird played by david patrick kelly of Luther and the Warriors was awesome. Fun fact, he was a big, uh, Brandon Lee was a big fan of the Warriors. So he was thrilled when he saw David Patrick Kelly playing T-Bird. And T-Bird, in the movie, I want to say he's not, he realizes the error of his ways. And even when he's about to be killed, he quotes Paradise Lost. And I'm not saying he laments, or that he's sorry for what he did, but he understands the fucked up nature of what happened. Almost kind of how in the book, Fun Boy is that character who the crow actually lets live longer and gives him somewhat of a peaceful death, you know, than in the movie, so. Speaking of speaking of a uh, fun boy, he's the same in the book and in the movie. He's a you know a junkie, a real piece of crap. In the movie, so much so that he also also deals with Darla, Darla, who's the kid Sarah's mom, who in the book her name is Sandy, and is Sherry's mom. Not to make confusion, Sherry and Sandy are the same person. Biggest difference that in the and then the movie, um, 
the kid knows Eric and Shelly way beforehand. They're all friends. Matter of fact, Shelly took care of the kid. You know, while in the book, they don't know each other. They meet. Um, the crow meets Sherry on a stoop. Tells him about his mom and fun boy. And, you know. Uh, Gideon in the pawn shop is pretty much the same scumbag, you know. Played, you know, well by the, you know, by uh, Ippolito, by Polito. And you also have two new characters in the movie that were not in the book. You have Micah, who happens to be, I think, Top Dollar's half-sister. And Grange, played by Tony Todd, who's, I guess, his right-hand man, henchman type, you know, second-in-command or whatever. And Micah, played by Bai Ling, or Bai Ling, Bai Ling, Bai Ling, yeah. It's kind of like one of these, like, supernatural witchy people who kind of you know knows things and thinks she's a psychic or a mystic or something so here's where the hollywood part pisses me off about the movie as opposed to the book it somehow micah finds out or thinks that the crow's power or i'm gonna say eric eric's power is the actual crow the bird Okay, so they find a way that if they, if they kill the bird, then Eric will have no more power. Meaning he's able to be killed and won't be like a ghost and he can't regenerate limbs and be shot and he can die. Okay, so the idea is here, again, here is where it gets crazy Hollywood. Grange kidnaps the kid, kidnaps Sarah, and takes her to, you know, Wherever the, you know, evil cathedral fortress is. The crow, Eric Draven, finds out, Brandon, and goes to, you know, get the kid and save the day, right? Here, Grange shoots the bird, the crow, which in turn makes Brandon Lee, Eric Draven, his character, lose power, meaning... He gets shy, starts to bleed. He doesn't regenerate. Has no healing factor. So he could be killed. When they shoot the crow, you're like, oh shoot, they, 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 killed, they, killed, they killed the bird. But they don't. Albright comes out of nowhere. Saves the day. Saves the crow. Grange is killed. Micah is eaten by the actual bird. Get, poke, gets her eyes poked out. Whatever, and then you have the final battle on top of the cathedral from Top Dollar and Eric Draven. In the rain, no less. So now we go complete Hollywood. While the kid, Sarah's hanging on a ledge and almost falls, he's getting his ass beat on top of the thing with a sword, yada yada. He fights back. He gets sliced through the chest. She's like, no, Eric. All of a sudden, then he, you know, tells Eric that he was in charge, that he gave the order to kill him, to kill, you know, Shelly and him. That he's sorry that he ruined their, you know, their plans for marriage, but he's going to miss him. Here, somehow Eric still has power, grabs him by the face and gives him 30 minutes of pain all in one moment all the pain that Eric felt when you know he was dying and Shelly and the whole thing and I guess kind of like Ghost Rider it's like a pen stare or whatever Top Dollar goes crazy starts screaming loses his footing falls off the cathedral impales himself dead Super Hollywood. Super bummed out about that. Would have preferred the comic version. To say the least. Yeah. Anyway. Other characters like Tintin and Skank. Tintin is similar in the book and the movie. Skank is a, a punk character that in the book and the movie. Throwaway characters. And basically at the end... 
in the book, a, a skull cowboy comes out. In the book, towards the end, the skull cowboy comes and tells him, good shot, basically, you're coming with me. Now, that was edited out of the movie for, I'm not sure for whatever reason, I guess because they were going so Hollywood that everything had to be had to, had to be changed up. It will be interesting to see how, and if you see some of the deleted scenes actually show the Skull Cowboy in the background. So, that's basically it. The movie, very good. Ending is a letdown. The book, great all around, great all around read it immediately so what's better the book the movie's great not great the movie's very good Brian Lee's portrayal was great he really felt it he really gave it his all and it's a shame that the movie's gonna end up being a memorial to him in the sense because it was his best role but I think he deserved a memorial on his own on everything not only this movie and he could have been one of the great ones. And yeah, so soundtrack is great. Watch the movie. It's definitely watchable. It's 100% watchable. And, but that's basically it. I'm Izzy. But the day there, dudes. This was a long video, but I hope you, you know, long video, long pod, lot podcast episode. But if you like it, let me know. We can do more. This is The Crow versus Book versus the movie. Everybody take care of yourselves, stay safe, and save the whales.